Hi everyone, my name is Leslie and I'm one of the advisors in the Faculty of Science. Today I have about a 40 minute presentation for you about how to succeed in your first year as a science student. So first off, I have a territory's acknowledgement. So the University of Manitoba campuses are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories, we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So a little bit about what we'll talk about today. Today is about the nitty gritty dirty stuff that you need to know before the fun of university can begin. So we'll go over science at the U of M, different departments and areas that you can study, a little bit about professional programs, planning a degree, so we'll break it down for you, go into some registration type things and a little bit about course load planning, more than a degree, so how to enhance your science degree with experiences at the U of M, assessment and university policies, so this means your grades and exam policies, how we can support you and how you can support yourself, and then what's next, what you should be doing after you register for courses. So science is the largest faculty at the U of M. We have over 6,500 undergraduate students, and we also have graduate studies, which includes master's and PhD programs. We have over 30 degrees and programs for our undergraduate students to choose from. We do have many programs between majors, honors, and joint programs. So the departments and programs listed on your screen are just a sample of what you can study. So let's look a little more in depth into the different areas that you can study in science. So we've broken it down into three areas. The first is life sciences. So this includes biology, the study of life, cells in plants and animals, the physiology of them, how they develop and interact with each other, genetics, which is the science of genes, the building blocks of life, uh, study the codes in our cells. This is the instructions for how the body functions microbiology, which is the study of microscopic organisms, so the smallest organisms like bacteria, viruses, fungi, and algae, biochemistry, which is the study of chemical composition and biological processes, the chemical reactions that take place inside of living things, uh, mathematical and computing sciences, so this includes mathematics, which is the study of quantity, structure, space, and change, Statistics is the science of making sense of data, so you collect and analyze numerical de data in large quantities and interpret what they mean. Actuarial mathematics, so this involves the application of math mathematical disciplines, uh, probability, statistics, and risk theory to real-life financial problems involving future uncertainty. So they look at areas like life insurance, health insurance, employee benefit plans, computer science, this is the study of computer technology, software, and hardware. Data science, so this combines statistics, mathematics, and computer science in an interdisciplinary program. We use processes with the news departments to collect, analyze, and interpret information. And lastly, physical science. So that includes chemistry, which is the science of matter, properties, how and why substances combine or separate to form other substances, how they react with energy, Physics is the science of matter, energy, and the interaction between them. Astronomy, which is a scientific study of all objects beyond Earth within the universe. Science does offer a degree in psychology. However, psychology is te technically a department under the Faculty of Arts. Uh, some differences in the science th psychology through science degree versus the psychology through arts degree um, is that you're going to be more skilled towards the cognitive or behavioral neuroscience behind psychology. So what is in a university degree? Well, most undergraduate degrees or bachelor's degrees require around four years or 120 credit hours to complete. The Faculty of Science does offer an undergraduate degree that requires three years or 90 credit hours in length. We find the average time it takes a student to complete any of our degrees is five years. There is no time limit to your degree and it's different for every student how you'd like to manage your time here. Every student has different responsibilities that affect their course load. So you may work part-time, join a student group, play sports, have financial responsibilities, family responsibilities. 
So all those things are going into the decision that you make for the amount of courses that you take in a term and ultimately how long it's going to take to complete your degree. So your degree is made up of different courses, including major courses in the area that you're focused in, electives or choice courses, and other required courses. You take these courses as you move throughout your degree, so each year has a little bit of everything. We do allow students to make the choice as to what courses they take each year, and the advisors just guide them to make sure they're meeting those requirements to continue on in their program. As a first year student, you only need to know the different areas that you're interested in. Many areas in science overlap a lot in the first year as you gain that foundational knowledge. And keep in mind that you can move into a four-year major degree or the honors degree at any time. You just have to meet the specific requirements for entry into that degree, which we'll go into a little bit later. And then if you have declared a program, you aren't forced or have to stick it out to finish that degree. So take the first two years to explore different areas of interest, as all your courses can be used within your degree. So if you're a direct entry from high school student, you start your journey in science in the major undeclared program. This gives you the opportunity to test out different areas in science before you decide on what you'd like to declare. You can move to a declared major or honors after meeting entry requirements in your first year, or you may need to move to the general degree if you haven't decided what you'd like to take and you want to continue taking courses. Another thing to remember during your course planning for the first year and beyond is that parallel planning is really important. Parallel planning is thinking about an alternative plan to our degrees because nothing ever goes as smoothly as we'd really like it to. Parallel planning can help keep you out of that panic mode when you find out your first plan may not work out. So you're going to be exposed to a number of new concepts and ideas that you didn't know existed. Therefore, your mind is going to change multiple times about what you want to do. So keep your mind open and this way you're able to explore alternatives. So the Faculty of Science does have four different degrees. We have the Bachelor of Computer Science Honors, the Bachelor of Science Honors, the Bachelor of Science Major, and the Bachelor of Science General Degree. There is no cap to the amount of students in the program, but there are GPA and minimum grade requirements to enter the majors or honors degrees. Major and honors degrees focus on different science departments. So for example, you could major in psychology or do an honors degree in microbiology. The main difference between majors and honors programs are mostly academic requirements. Um, an honors degree will have higher grades that you need to complete. Um, they may have a thesis or a research project. Um, and the honors degree is the most direct route to a graduate program. Within an honors degree, you are also required to be a full-time student. So that's nine credit hours in the fall and winter in terms that you're registered. A major's degree requires a 2.0 GPA and an honors requires a 3.0 GPA. If you are interested in doing psychology honors, it's a 3.5 GPA. The general degree is a really great stepping stone degree for entry into other programs. So for example, medicine at the U of M. However, it is a general knowledge-based degree, so there is no specializations within it. So each program has a different set of required core courses and electives. Electives are up for you to choose, and we really encourage you to choose from other science departments outside of your specific major or even faculties outside of science. So when and how to declare a degree. So after your first year, you may be able to declare your major on Aurora, or maybe you need to change into the general degree to explore things a little bit more before you make up your mind. So if you do want to change to the general degree, change your major, add a minor, or go into the honors, we actually have a form on our website that you can submit online to have that done. So on the screen is an example of entry requirements for a computer science major. So it talks about the specific courses that are needed for you to enter, and it talks about a minimum DGPA. So when we talk about DGPA, in science, we use everything that you've taken at the U of M, as well as anything that is transferred in. So this could mean AP and IB grades towards your degree GPA. So we're looking at everything that you've done for your GPA. Majors and honors degrees also have an optional minor. Uh, these minors can be from inside or outside the Faculty of Science. 
These courses that you use for your minor can kind of be double dipped within your degree. So they can be used to complete other requirements such as electives as well. If you are interested in doing a minor, it can be added at any time um, and you can declare multiple minors. So you are required to complete the 120 credit hours or the 90 credit hours depending on your program, but lots of students do go over this amount and that's fine, you're not penalized for that. Uh, we do see the average time for students to complete a degree is five years. And some reasons that students take more than the 120 or 90 credit hours is that maybe they've decided on a different path and they need to take more courses to go towards that path. Um, maybe you're repeating a course or maybe you wanna take a course for interest that doesn't necessarily fit into your degree. So a science degree will also provide you with a good foundation for entrance into professional healthcare programs, programs that require a degree or programs that require science prerequisite courses in order to enter. So some, some examples of this are education, medicine, law, dentistry, nursing, physical therapy. So what we do is we suggest that you read the admission bulletin available on the U of M website and other schools that you may be interested in will also have the admission requirements on their website as well. And also the first year planning guide goes over courses for professional programs too. You should also talk to an advisor. So this way you can see how your requirements for the professional program can be used towards a science degree. So now that we know what a science degree is made up of and the different options that we can do, we need to talk about finding the requirements for those degrees. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at the planning, the first year planning guide. If not, we recommend you look at this before registering. All the information in this guide comes directly from the academic advisors. So some things that you can find in the first year planning guide is what is a credit hour, what's the revision period, what's a VW. So all these terms that come so easy to us and that you need to be comfortable with using. So let's look a little bit at what's in the first year planning guide. So we're going to use the U of M search bar and we're going to look up the first year planning guide. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for a science program. So let's search for genetics. So as you can see here on the screen, this first year planning guide lists all the requirements that are needed and that you should be looking at taking within your first year. You'll notice in some places, like for example, Math 1500, there's a few courses listed. The course that we recommend that you take is always going to be the first one listed. Um, same thing with here with Stats 1000. So we really recommend you take the first courses listed. One thing to mention is that the first year planning guide is based on, a, on five courses per term, which is not something we normally recommend, at least within your first year. Um, like I said earlier, it's different for every student how many courses they want to take in a term. But um, if you're not planning to take five courses in the fall and five in the winter, then we need to decide what courses are the most important courses for us. So how do we do that? Well, another resource that we can use is called the academic, oops, the academic calendar. So the academic calendar um, is basically a contract with you and the university. So it's kind of like the rule book for everything at the U of M. So let me bring it up here. So we'll go back to our home page and go to the academic calendar. So under undergraduate studies, you can see there's a bunch of different information about university policies and procedures. So if we look at that, it talks about grade point averages, repeated course policies, student discipline bylaws. Um, it talks about um, 
general academic regulations. So we can go and look at the residency and the written English requirement, uh, final exams. And then we scroll all the way down to the Faculty of Science. It's going to list all of the different departments within science. So let's, for, for example, let's look at computer science. So the first page gives us a little bit of information about the degree and the website. And then if we go to the program list, it's going to list all of the different degrees that the Faculty of Science offers within computer science. If we click on the major degree, it's going to take us to, again, those entry requirements. So it tells us what we need to enter. And then if we look at the degree requirements, it's going to list out every year the courses that we should be looking at taking. Also, you'll notice that in some years, if you're scrolling down, it talks about how you need 18 credit hours of 3,000 or 4,000 level computer science courses. So this part right here is for up for you to choose. So as long as they're on top of what the courses are specifically set out here, you can decide on the courses for your specific major when it talks about this. Um, so that's another good resource to use while you're looking at registering. Um, another resource that we recommend using is called UM Achieve. So UM Achieve is a degree audit program. Uh, this means that it runs automated program checks and it's for every degree on campus, not just for science. So you can run what's called what if audits. So what if I want to do um, a major degree in statistics or what if I want to go into kinesiology? So you can run these audits to see where your courses would fit within those other degrees. If you have AP and IB grades, they will show here as well. And it's done in real time. So your current registration, it updates automatically. So if you add a course, if you drop a course, it will show right away in the audit. So this is a really good tool to use before and after you register for your courses. So you should be running an audit, especially after you register to take a look at the different program and where your courses are going to fit within them. Um, there are tutorials that are available on the U of M's website about how to use UM Achieve. And one thing I want to mention is that it's really important to check every section of the audit. On your screen, I just have the charts at the beginning of the audit, but if we press this open all sections, it's going to open up a whole list of requirements for the degrees. And so it's a good thing to check every section of the audit. Um, this helps you better understand the layout of your degree, and then it also makes sure that you have every aspect of the degree completed. So now we've gone over a little bit of different resources that we can use to figure out the courses that we need to take, and now we actually have to register for those courses. So the actual registration process is pretty easy. It is three steps, however, you need to put some serious thought into these steps as you're going through them. So the schedule is available in Aurora now, and so make sure you're reading it carefully. So the first thing to do is use Aurora to find class times. So check the times, the days that your class is um, going to be on, where it's located. Make sure that you have um, the specific prerequisites to take the courses that you want to do. And then next is to plan a timetable. So make sure that your courses don't overlap with each other um, and that you can fit all of your courses into your day. Uh, choose some backup classes just in case um, the classes that you wanna get into are um, busy or full. Um, but one thing to mention is that this is the first time that you're going to be getting first access to all of the courses. So you want to make sure that you're going in on your specific registration date and time and registering for the fall and winter. Um, then you also want to look at planning your day. So thinking about if you want to have all of your classes back to back, do you want a break to do some studying or just a break to do nothing at all? So take some time and make a few draft schedules before you register. And the first year planning guide has a really great timetable sheet that you can use. Um, and then lastly is register for courses. So like I said earlier, make sure you're registering for the fall and winter on your appropriate date and time. Um, if you do wait until a later date, um, it will be harder to have the flexibility in the courses and the course times. 
So you could possibly end up not getting a, a lecture spot that you want, or you could even um, end up on a wait list for a course. So if you plan to take courses that have high school prerequisites, make sure your high school grades are loaded in Aurora. They can be found in the external prerequisites section of your student record section on Aurora. Uh, so I'm going to do a really quick demo of one of the courses in Aurora. So let's go back to the home page here. So I'm not going to log into Aurora, I'm just going to look at the class schedule. And we're going to look at a class that has a lecture and a lab section. So let's look at Math 1500. So you'll notice here that um, there's some information for the first page. Um, so here we can see the days of the week that the course is offered, um, the time the course is offered, and we can also see up here that this section must be taken with a laboratory or a tutorial. So anything that has an A section is going to be considered a lecture. And if we scroll down, anything that's considered a B section is going to be a lab. You have to register for a lecture and a lab section at the same time. If you don't, you will get an error when you're trying to register. So that's just an example of one of the courses and the information that you can find on it when you are registering. Uh, one thing to note is that labs are usually once a day or once a week, and lectures are usually multiple times a week. Um, some of them do range in times as well. So it is your responsibility to learn the system um, because you need to know it uh, in order to register and you need to know it in order to know everything about your degree. So we've gone over timetabling and registering and what comes with this is deciding on a course load. So like I said earlier, everyone is different, everyone has different things going on in their life, but it's really important for um, you to make realistic choices with what works for you. Uh, your main priority is to be a student and you need to plan to devote enough time to classes and studying so that you can be successful. For each course that you take, you should expect to spend about seven or eight hours outside of classes per week on it. So if you're taking four courses, this is over 30 hours per week. So it's really like a full-time job. The correct amount of courses for you is based on lifestyle. So like I said earlier, do you play sports, music, work part-time, family responsibilities, uh, your program of choice? So are you in an honors program? Do you need to be a full-time student? Scholarship requirements? So is there a certain amount of courses that you need to be taking each term to maintain your scholarship? Most of the time that's 24 credit hours in a year. Student loan. So is there a minimum that you need to be taking to make sure you're meeting your student loan requirements? Most of the time that's 18 credit hours in a year. Um, and there's lots of resources to help you plan your timetable. So the first year planning guide has a timetable planning sheet. The Academic Learning Center, which I'll talk about later, um, which is my favorite place to refer students to. They have great online worksheets and presentations and workshops to help you manage your time. And this is something that takes practice and you'll need to develop as a skill. So using these resources to help with your time management skill is really beneficial for you. So a degree is really just one step in your career. Employers are looking for candidates who have a diversity of experiences and, most of the, the, and the most successful students are those who get involved in things outside of class. So some things you can do are research. There are opportunities for research awards or volunteer and paid jobs in labs to gain practical experience. Exchanges, volunteer abroad. So international experience always looks great on a resume and it's a really unique experience to go study at a university in Europe or Asia or Australia for a term. Department clubs and student groups. So this is a great way to find people with similar interests. The U of M has over 150 different student groups Within science, we have Let's Talk Science, so in the picture on your screen, uh, they engage with youth, youth to teach them about science and STEM, uh, WICS, which is Women in Computer Science, 
Dev Club, so that provides students with coding experience, and that's just to name a few of them. A student Life, so this is service learning, travel experiences, mentorship programs, campus ambassadors, um, peer advisors. The Science Student Association, or the SSA, they are the governing body for all science students, so you can apply and be elected into different positions among the SSA. And then they also put on lots of different events throughout the year. Bison Sports, so you can be a spectator or you may be part of the team. So on your screen is just a list of Instagram accounts for different science clubs as well as UMSU, which is your student union. Um, so if you do want, you can take a picture or a screenshot of this list um, and follow any of the ones that you are interested in. Uh, the first two, the U Manitoba SSA is your Science Student Association, and then the My UMSU is, of course, the UMSU Association. So Science Co-op, many of you have heard of our co-op option. Um, almost all of our science programs do have co-op. Co-op is three four-month paid work terms. Um, you alternate between school and work. Co-op is a great way to gain a degree-related work experience, uh, build new resume, build your resume with new skills, enhance your employability after graduation, and get a chance to apply your classroom learning to real-life work and do a little bit of career exploration. So you do earn about $17 to $25 an hour while you're in co-op. You normally apply for co the co-op program at the end of your second year. And they do offer presentation sessions a few times a year, a few times a year. Um, so check their website for more information. So the pictures on your screen are actual science students in co-op. Um, one of our students is working in Assiniboine Park. Uh, the gentleman in the tractor is working for Corteva, which is an agriculture chemical and seed company. The group of people in the bottom corner is actually working in Singapore at the Bioinformatics Institute. So there is opportunity to travel internationally as well. And that's just a sample of the different areas that you can work. On the co-op website, they do have a list of employers that students have worked with before. So it may have been a while since you've written a big exam. If you didn't write your grade 12 provincial exams, um, then you need to be prepared for some of the exams you're going to write um, in university. So some courses may have some midterms uh, during class or lab times. Um, others are outside of class time. So you must be available to write at the time your exam is scheduled. If you do miss a midterm, you must speak with your professor about making it up. This example on your screen shows a class that requires a midterm outside of class times. So you will know the dates of all your midterms for the first day of your class, so make sure you are available for them. And then final exams. So your final exam times will be listed under in Aurora under my exams. They take place after your course has been completed. Um, there's a 10 day, two week time frame where the final exams are held that you are expected to be available for. This fall term, the, the exams run from December 13th to December 23rd. If you do miss an exam due to an exceptional circumstance or illness, you can request what's called a deferred exam, which means that you can write an exam outside of the final exam schedule, um, normally after the final exam schedule. Um, a deferral is not something that is beneficial, but we do understand that certain things can arise, so we have this policy in place. If you do miss a final exam, you must apply for a deferred exam within 48 hours of the final exam. Um, we have a form available on our website as well to do that. Travel and work are not grounds for a deferred exam, so if you are making any travel plans, make sure to wait until after the exam schedule is done. So we all know that grades are important and you need certain grades to get into the program that you want and to graduate with your degree. So in science, we assess all students at the end of every term to make sure that you're making progress and meeting required minimum standards. Science uses your cumulative GPA, so this means all of the courses you've completed. The first assessment for you will happen in early January or when you've completed a minimum of 12 credit hours. And what we're looking for is that you've met a minimum GPA of 2.0. So 
the main thing you need to worry about is how you can avoid falling below a 2.0. So some tips are to know your grades for all your tests and assignments at all times. Your syllabus tells you how each test and assignment is weighted so that you can calculate your standing. Make sure you do all the work for your course and manage your time so you're not rushing and can do a good job. If you're short on time, you can't do a good job. So pay attention to those deadlines. If you are struggling, there is help available, but you need to ask for it. Um, so remember that during the term and the upcoming year, that self-care is very important and we are our own responsibility. So some of the reasons students sometimes make bad choices or attempt to cheat is because of the stress they feel or they're running out of time to get everything done. So what can we do to help ourselves? Well, we can go to class. Um, even if you know that class is going to be recorded later on, go to the class at the specified class time. I can guarantee you will learn more and absorb more information if you're being active in the class with your classmates do your homework. So practice tests, practice questions. This can determine your knowledge in the course and, and it's okay if you don't get it. Uh, we want to cultivate self-awareness. So conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, motives, desires, and needs. Know what you want and need to be happy and content. Um, so some things to think about are, are you taking enough breaks? Are you getting up? Are you eating? Are you going for a walk? Are you giving your brain a break? So it's really important to schedule these types of things for ourselves when we're studying and in classes, and then to try to keep a regular schedule. So get enough rest and exercise, and keep your goals in mind when you experience some more stressful times. Being a student is stressful, and we do expect a certain amount of stress, but we need to learn how to manage that stress in healthy ways. And then again, it is important to reach out and ask for help if you need so gather support um, from your family, friends, talking to your professors uh, about getting feedback on what you need to do for the course, um, and then talking to people in similar situations as well. So some other ways that we can support you are the science advisors. So we are your frontline support as you adjust to being a new student. Um, some things we look at when you are meeting with us in an appointment is we try to encourage you to define and develop your academic and personal goals. We assist you in exploring and planning programs consistent with your abilities and interests, including if you're in the right courses, planning ahead for your program, problem solving. So this could relate to course load or personal issues that are affecting you. We provide accurate information about programs, policies, and procedures at the U of M. We provide appropriate referrals to helpful offices and departments on campus. We listen without judgment to your concerns and questions. And we respect the confidentiality of advising sessions. So we follow a privacy law at the U of M called FIBA. And then what we expect from you. So be an active participant in your, in your education. So clarifying personal goals, interests, and values. So this means knowing your program requirements, completing course requirements, doing some research to figure out what you want to do with your degree, and then using resources on campus to figure out what you want to do with your degree. Um, being an active participant in university and culture, engaging in volunteer experience, student groups, etc. So we want you to have the responsibility to reach out for help. There are many resources here to help you, but you do need to be the one to ask for help. Acting with integrity. So this can mean being open to referrals that an advisor gives you and following up on those referrals. Keeping your commitments, make sure you're meeting deadlines or attending classes, or if you've made appointments with your prof or your advisor. Uh, putting in the effort to do well and being honest with yourself about your progress and courses and your degree, and then making appropriate decisions regarding your enrollment. So if you would like to meet with an academic advisor, we do ask that you tend to get ready to register a session and then watch this session before making an appointment. You can find our online booking on our science website and I will show you how to do that right now. So if we go to our website sci.umanitoba.ca um, under undergraduate students and academic advising. So it'll ask you to fill out a little bit of information. So are you an undergraduate student? 
your current faculty of registration, we're going to say science, and then what can we help you with? So here it lists a lot of different things that we can help you with. If you are interested in seeing an academic advisor and you go under course selection and program planning, scroll down a little bit to here and that takes you to our online appointment system where you can plan virtual or in-person appointments with us. One thing we also want to mention about the Academic Advising Office is that we are using a new program called WaitWell. Um, we're hoping that by using this we can prevent uh, wait times and waiting in line to enter the science office. So the pictures on the screen are the iPhone and the uh, Android apps um, where so that's what they look like in your app store. Um, I would suggest downloading the WaitWell app right now. Basically, you can sign up uh, before you're even on campus to come in and talk to an advisor in our office. Um, or if you have questions regarding registration, you can sign in the WaitWell app to come in person to talk to someone. Um, we're hoping, like I said, that it's going to prevent wait times as it gives you notifications to let you know when you're next in line. Um, you can receive notifications through the app or through text as well. You can extend your time, you can remove yourself from the queue, and we can transfer you to other offices that are using WaitWell as well. Wait well. Um, so the Registrar's Office, the Faculty of Arts, University One, Information Service and Technology, um, they are all using the WaitWell system as well. So if you come in with a question and the Faculty of Science isn't really the direct place to go, we can transfer you to another um, place and you won't lose your spot in line. And we are hopefully looking at using this app to book appointments um, in the fall. So a little bit more about supports that are available to you on campus. So professors and TAs, most courses, courses will have a TA, which is a teaching assistant. Um, and these are people are experts in their content. So your prof will post office hours in their syllabus. Um, or you can email them to set up a meeting. Uh, help centers, so some departments have help centers run by profs and grad students to, to assist students with concepts throughout the course. Within science, we have the math help center, uh, the chemistry help center, and OPUS, which is the organization of physics undergraduate students, has a help center for your first year physics courses as well. Tutors, so the Science Student Association actually offers Free tutors. They use an app called Nimbus, um, and you can get tutors through the Academic Learning Center as well. Uh, there's also supplemental instruction sessions, so this is extra study sessions by trained leaders. Librarians. So the reference librarians are an underused resource. Uh, they can guide you from everything from finding information to sourcing information, and then we even offer high school prep classes in case you didn't take it. You didn't get the chance to take that grade 12 science course you now need. We offer Math, Chem, and Physics 1810 courses. The great thing about these courses is that they are actual credit hours. So they are three credit hours of undergraduate courses. So um, that means is that they can be used as an elective in some of the science degrees. So on this page, I have a whole slew of places on campus. So I'm just gonna go over my favorite. Um, so the first year center, um, it's not just for University One students. Uh, the First Year Center is your go-to resource for everything you need to know about being a first year student. So they can answer questions about program and degree requirements as well as university policies. They can review and evaluate your academic plans based on the first year planning guide. Um, they can also help you with registration if you're having registration issues, you can always go to the First Year Center as well. Uh, career Services. So Career Services um, are helpful with career and employment help for students and their career planning and job search. The Academic Learning Center, like I said before, the Academic Learning Center is my absolute favorite place to refer students. Um, they offer writing, study skills, tutors, workshops, supplemental instruction sessions, tip sheets, group study sessions, uh, studying and preparing for final exams. So they're a really great use resource to use. The Health and Wellness Office. So um, students often juggle multiple demands and we recognize that it can be difficult for you to balance. So 
Um, if you have any questions or you want to make changes to your health and wellness, uh, the health and wellness office is um, a really great place for support um, to help you make um, your own decisions. And we refer students to these offices every day. So even if you're not going through a tough time, these resources are available for you to, to go to. And it's always great to work on bettering your skills. Another, on campus, another um, office on campus that I want to quickly mention is Financial Aid and Awards. So they have awards, scholarships, bursaries, which is for both part-time and full-time students who have demonstrated that they require financial need, uh, government student loans, emergency short-term loans, the work-study program, which offers part-time work on campus for students with financial need during the school year, uh, the U of M Food Bank, which is available to you as a student and something that you can donate to as well. Okay, so now you've accepted your, mission, your admission, you may also be starting to register already. So registration begins on July 12th. Um, as of last Friday, you could log on to Aurora to see your official registration time. If you haven't done that already, I would suggest doing it right now. Um, use the U of M search bar if you have questions. It's a really great tool. It'll take you any information that you need to know. Um, a little bit about some helpful tips for registration. If you're having problems with registration, call our office. Don't set up an appointment with an advisor. Um, that will take way too long. Definitely call our office right away. Our phones are set up with a callback option, um, so you don't have to sit and wait on the line. We can call you back. Um, some days we are so busy that we cannot make it through our phone queue, so if you don't receive a callback from us on that day, make sure you're calling the next day. And like I mentioned earlier, the First Year Center can also help you with registration errors and advising based on the First Year Planning Guide. So if you can't get a hold of us, definitely contact the First Year Center. Um, so fees, uh, the Registrar's Office website says a three credit hour science course, this does not include your textbook and other fees, is around $650 domestic. Um, you can use the search bar to search for fees on the U of M website, and it actually breaks down um, what fees you're paying and where they're going towards. Uh, the bookstore, so you can shop online or you can go in person. You can also get all of your U of M hoodies, t-shirts and everything there. Um, and then they do usually have some sales and they have a few other interesting things as well. Keep checking your email and the First Year Center website for helpful, helpful tips about registration, being a first year student and orientation for in September. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you've claimed your My U Manitoba email. All the information will go there. Um, the Faculty of Science website is a great resource to use for degree programming, research opportunities, co-op, academic resources. And then on your screen, it shows our Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and also our YouTube channel. So that's everything for me today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.